What's up guys and welcome to this video about Jetpack Compose and Canvas. In this video we are going to build such a clock, which is a perfect example to get actually started with Canvas in Jetpack Compose. I'm in an empty Jetpack Compose project here in Android Studio and I've already added my default color palette, but I think we only need these two colors here. But you can choose just white and black uh, for your own project or uh, copy this from my GitHub's repository, which is linked down below. In our main activity, we can uh, remove this default stuff and define our clock composable, which we will simply call clock. This composable takes a modifier, which we will set to the default modifier, then the time, which we will pass as a lambda function, and this returns long, and then we can invoke this function inside our clock composable and access the state there, because uh, this function will provide the current time state, and if we later on call this clock composable inside our main activity, for example, then uh, we would also um, uh, cause additional recompositions of potential other composables. And if we pass this time state, which is passed very frequently inside our clock composable and read it there, then we can optimize the performance by accessing the state inside the clock composable, invoking this time function. Then we have the circle radius of type float, how big our uh, clock will actually be, and we also have an outer circle thickness. And uh, this is the little circle uh, around our clock circle, which uh, kinda has a little bit of a other color and other gradient. Um, I will show you what I mean by this. It just makes the clock a little bit more beautiful. In here, in our clock composable, we have a circle center var by remember, which will be a mutable state of, and we will set this to offset.0 by default. And then we also need to import the get and set values for the remember. And then we have a box where we put our canvas into. This box takes the modifier we pass above in the clock composable. And in this box, we can then invoke our canvas. And this canvas will also have a modifier which we will set to modifier.filmx size. And then uh, we open the draw scope like this. And in here, we first need um, some different values. We need, of course, the width of the canvas, size.width, the height, which we can get from size.height. So this is the width and the height of the canvas. And since it fills the max size, and this fills the modifier's size, the canvas is as big as this box is. And so we get the size.width and height and can determine how big the canvas actually is. Then we have a circle center, our mutable state var, which we defined above. And we can set this to an offset. And for the x value, we will pass width, dot, uh, width divided by 2f. And for the y value, the height divided by 2f. And we just need the width and the height for the circle center calculation. We could also make this inline, but I think this is a little bit more readable. Then we also need the date. And we can get this date now invoking our time function. Because we can pass the current milliseconds, which provides this time function inside a date constructor. And then we get the current date. Then we also need a calendar, because uh, with this date, or we need uh, the hours, minutes, and seconds from our date, and we can uh, make this easy with such a calendar, get uh, instance, and then uh, we set the time of this calendar to our date, and then we can say val hours is equal to cal.get calendar.hour of day, and for the minutes, uh, we say calendar.get calendar.minute, and I think we can uh, copy this and paste it like this, Let's say seconds here, and here we say calendar.second. Then we can start drawing the circles. We will first draw the outer circle, which is around our clock. And you will see this when we launch this in two minutes, and then uh, you can see what the different circles are about. Uh, this draw circle will have a style and we will pass a stroke for that and the width of the stroke is our outer circle thickness and let's also import stroke here. Then uh, we have a brush which we will set to brush.linear gradient and this linear gradient needs a list of uh, colors and for the colors we pass white.copy 
We will make this a little bit transparent here to the background so you can also adjust the background and the clock kind of adapts to that. And for the second color, we pass dark gray dot copy 0.35f. Then we also need to set the radius, which will be our circle radius plus our outer circle thickness divided by 2f. So the outer circle will be drawn around our inner clock circle. And of course, we need to set the center of the circle, which will be our circle center. Then we can draw the next circle for our actual clock. We say draw circle again. This also takes a brush, which will be a brush dot radial gradient in this case. And this also takes a list of colors, which will be white dot copy 0.45f. You can also, of course, play around with these values and look how it um, uh, looks in your own projects. But um, yeah, this is just uh, some example stuff here with these colors and the gradients, and it shouldn't matter if you use some other colors and we will set the second color to dark gray dot copy and pass for the alpha again the transparent one and then we also set the radius to our circle radius this time and the center will be our circle center again then we can actually go up to our main activity and launch this for the first time so that we can see what the drawn circles are about and for the modifier we pass modifier dot um, fill max size and we also set the background to white um, well let's remove this this is not necessary and the content alignment will be alignment.center then we can open the box scope and in here we invoke our clock composable and for the modifier we pass modifier.size 500 dp and import dp here and then we can also um, uh, let me quickly oh <laughs> I imported uh, the Java clock and not our clock composable. Let's remove it and then this should be fine. And then for the timer, we will just pass the current time in milliseconds. Um, for now, we will make this uh, state later. And then we also need the circle radius, which will be 600F and the outer circle thickness, which we will set to 50F. And then we can um, launch this and have a look at the design all right okay this looks good so far as you can see the outer circle with the linear gradient so it's a little bit darker on the bottom left and the inner circle our clock circle with the radial gradient then we can go to our canvas again and draw another circle the little dot circle in the middle where the different clock hands are um, located or started we can say draw circle and this time we will just pass a color, which will be gray. The radius will be 15F and the center will be again set to our circle center. And then we can uh, launch this again just to show you um, what this is about. It's about the little dot in the middle of the clock. Okay, now we can draw the 60 lines for our minutes. And each fifth step, we want to draw a little bit more larger line, which is also a little bit thicker. For that, we define two values, little line length, which will be set to a circle radius multiplied with 0.1f, and then also a large line length is equal to a circle radius multiplied with 0.2f. And then we can uh, start a for loop, 4i in 0 until 60, which will be our 60 minutes from 0 to 59, because the 60th minute is not there it's just the next hour then then we have uh, well angel in degrees which will be set to i multiplied with 360 f divided by 60 and this means that our circle has a total degree of 360 this is just the total degree for a circle we divide this by 60 because we have 60 different minutes so each minute has a, a relative degree of five uh, no six and then we multiply it with i so we get the degree for each minute uh, depending on how this i is set then we have also the ancient red which makes it a little bit more easy to calculate with sinus and cosinus later for the arrangement of our minute lines and we can say angel in red is equal to angel in degrees multiplied with pi divided by 180 f. This is the general formula to uh, convert angel in degrees to angel in red. 
Then we add pi divided by 2f. This means we add 180 degrees, because if we would convert this pi divided by 2f to degrees, then this would be 180 degrees. And we do this because by default we start at the bottom. The third degree, the zero degree is at the bottom. And we want to start at the top because on a clock, the first minute is at the top. And so we add 180 degrees so that the drawing is kind of mapped from the bottom to the top um, uh, regarding the start. And also all other values will then be mapped to the right place. Then we say, well, line length is equal to if i modulo 5, so each fifth step is, is equal to 0, then we take the large line length. And if this is not the case, we take the little line length. Then we also say, well, line thickness is equal to if i modulo 5 again is equal to 0. If this is the case, we make the thickness 5f and else just 2f. And then we can uh, actually start calculating the start and the end point of each of our minute lines. We say well start is equal to offset. And the x value will be our circle radius multiplied with cosinus. And we pass our angel in red plus our circle center dot x and say to float. For the y value we pass again our circle radius multiplied but this time with sinus of angel in red plus our circle center dot y. And then we map this to float. In case you're asking yourself what these values are about, of course we start at our circle center dot y or dot x for the x and y values. And then we add our circle radius, but not only our circle radius, because if we would just add the circle radius, then we of course would draw on the most outside point but we also need to arrange the line then depending on the current minute. And we can um, calculate this with this cosinus and sinus functions. This is just triangle basic knowledge and um, uh, yeah, to just make this uh, arrangement the right way. Otherwise, all the lines would just go from the top to the bottom. And then we can also um, copy and paste this for the end. We say well end and this time we have the same values except here we add for the end the line length. Then we can draw our lines. We will say rotate angel in degrees and for the pivot we set the start. And in here we draw then a line and this line will be uh, colored with gray. The start will be start, the end will be our calculated end and also the stroke width, which will be our line thickness, dot dp, dot two pixel. And then we can start this, and you will see that uh, something is missing, because uh, these lines will just go the, in the wrong direction. So um, uh, they are arranged the right way, but we kind of, we, we want to invert them now. And we can um, uh, do this by um, modifying this rotate function, we will just add 100 like this and then we can um, start this again and you will see that uh, this will work now. And yeah, this uh, 180 just um, uh, changes um, the arrangement by 180 degrees, so they are going um, uh, from the top to the bottom now. Now we can take care of our clock hands for the minute, hour and second. For that we will create a enumcast clock hand. And this will contain seconds, minutes, and hours. And then uh, outside this for loop here, we can create a value, well, clock hands is equal to a list of, and this will contain clock hand dot seconds, clock hand dot minutes, and clock hand dot hours. And then we can loop over this clock hands. I will just do this in the most general way uh, possible. We could also draw each clock hand on its own, but uh, we will do this in a for loop so that we can um, uh, avoid writing the same code again and again. We will say clock hands for each. In here we will get the clock hand provided. And then first we need the angel in degrees for our different clock hands. And we can achieve this now by calculating with our seconds, minutes, and hours, which we defined above. We will say, well, angel in degrees is equal to when 
clock hand. If our clock hand is clock hand dot second, then we say seconds multiplied with 360f divided by 60f because uh, each second from 0 to 59 uh, has a specific angel, a relative angel. And this is the relative angel because we also have 60 seconds like we had in the minutes above. And then we can multiply it with our seconds and we get the right angel for our second clock hand. Then if it's clock hand dot minutes, then we need an additional calculation because we don't want the minute clock hand to go only from one minute to another when a new minute is um, reached. We also want to update this minutes clock hand when the seconds changing because when we have, for example, five minutes and 30 seconds, then we want to make this clock hand minutes between the fifth and the sixth minute. So that is adaptive to the second and not only jumps when a total minute changes. We will say minutes plus seconds divided by 60f and then we multiply this with 360f divided by 60 again and then clock hand dot hours our last case uh, now we need to uh, make a little bit of an additional calculation uh, because uh, we just have 24 hours but uh, on the clock we only have 12 hours and um, therefore we need to uh, map this and we can this achieve this with the following calculation we will say hours modulo 12 this means that if we have for example the 18th hour of the day then this modulo 12 would give us 6 which means 6 o'clock which is right this is the mapping to the 12 different hours on the clock then we divide this by 2f multiplied with 16f to get the relative amount and then we also need to multiply this with our minutes divided by 12f because um, uh, we also need the hour clock hand um, uh, go further depending on the minutes and between each hour step there are five minutes and uh, if we invert this then we have uh, the minutes divided by 12f to map this to this five different values for example if we have 30 minutes divide this by 12f this would be 2.5 and then uh, this means that the hour the hour clock hand is between two different hour values and again we then have our calculation uh, 360f divided by 60 for the um, uh, mapping to decrease after that we also need the line length for our different clock hands is equal to when clock hand clock hands dot seconds then uh, we will return circle radius multiplied with 0.8f and we can um, copy and paste this like this here we have the minutes and we will have uh, 0.7f for the hours we will have 0.5f and here we need to change this to hours and then uh, the same thing for our um, uh, thickness uh, so the line thickness um, uh, will be uh, 3f here, here we will have uh, 7f and down here we will have 9f and then we can actually start drawing. For the start value we will say offset and pass for the x our circle center dot x and for the y our circle center dot y and for the end we can just uh, copy and paste this here and name this to end and we also have an additional y here with our line length. And then we can draw it, we say rotate uh, angel in degrees minus 180 or plus 180, this doesn't matter here. The pivot will be start and then we can draw the line, draw line. The line will be uh, uh, also colored depending on the clock hand. So if our clock hand is equal to clock hands dot second, then we have the red orange color else we will have gray. And then we pass start for the start and end for the end. And the stroke width will be our line thickness dot dp dot two pixel. And then we can actually start and have a look. And well, I think the second and the minute is fine, but the hour is not fine. This is wrong. And let me have a look. Okay, here we need to uh, set this to plus and then it should work. And yeah, now everything looks fine. The only thing that's left is uh, updating the clock every second, every 500 milliseconds. 
um, as you prefer this. Uh, we need to do this in our main activity. Here we will have current time in milliseconds by remember. This will be set to system.currenttimemillis by default. And then we will start a launched effect so that we can get a curatine scope and this effect will only be triggered once. And here we can say while true, we will just make this endless and delay it each loop for 200 milliseconds that it does not get updated too much. And then we update our current time in milliseconds with the current time in milliseconds function. And in here in our time lambda, we provide then our current time in milliseconds. And then this state only gets read inside our clock composable. And uh, this um, avoids unnecessary recompositions, which would be in the parrot scope here. And this is uh, changed very frequently each 200 milliseconds. And so we avoid with this lambda approach a lot of recompositions uh, and optimize the performance here. Our clock looks also very fine and it's also working. The seconds clock hand gets updated very frequently each second and also our minutes clock hand is between the two second lines now if you have a closer look and also our hour clock hand is between hour one and hour two and more to the right because we already have 42 minutes almost. Alright, okay, this should be it for the clock composable. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this video. We will see us in the next video.